Hey guys, this is Tim from Twice Circled, and welcome to the official Mega Aquarium video blog, episode 56. So this episode is a run through of all the changes in the latest update, which is version 1.3. And I've actually gone back to a um, a aquarium that I started building in a vlog, I don't know, five to ten episodes ago. I can't remember exactly. Uh, because it's about the right size to talk about some of the stuff. So the big one, the first thing that uh, I've added is this new tab here. So continuing the theme of adding additional staff management controls we've added this advanced tab so that now if you switch to this you can basically toggle to either allow or disallow every single item in the game as well as every um, as well as these three skill levels um, so this gives you fine-tuned control right up till now what you've been able to do is set different priorities for roles but within each role you have like these different items don't you so you've got within the feeding role you have every single type of food you've got every single su you've got the supplement and then within the um cleaning role you have the sponge and the broom and things like this and then you've even got the different refills for the gift shop role so if you want to control it so that you know one particular staff member is doing a particular one of those then what you can do is you can disallow those role, uh, those items or skill levels um, on other staff members and i've chosen to go for this binary toggle system where you just either allow or you disallow uh, because one it keeps it very simple two it means the default behavior isn't confusing so by default everything is allowed so by default nothing changes so this is very much an opt-in it's there for the people who really want to delve into the additional complexity of their management strategies that this can allow. So let's take a look at some examples of what you can do with this thing. So I think we've already, I've already got a few of these. Um, so you, actually first off how to access this for people who just want to know like how do I use this. Obviously you can select any staff member and click advanced. I put a little shortcut in to help which is that if you right click it gives you a little hint here. So you can click to open the staff details and you can right click to jump directly to the advanced tab. Um, and if you add on to that this um, extra little feature, which I'm just going to kind of quickly preview now, um, I've added the, based on a recommendation, somebody suggested that they like the idea that if you click on something that's already open, it closes rather than it just go, making like a bump sound uh, and staying open. So it's like an additional ability. Now you don't have to use this, obviously. It only happens if you click on something twice. But um, I've added this new option now here under interface, which is actually a new category. So it's behavior when object is selected the second time. We've got close it window. If you like the original behavior, you can click keep open and that'll be just how it has been forever. Uh, but by default, this is the new behavior because it can be quite useful. So the reason I'm telling you about this is now you actually have, have this nice ability where, for example, if you just want to look at what Nigel is disallowed, you can right click because it opens that automatically on the advanced tab. And if you right click again, it does the standard behavior of closing it. So you can actually check these quite easily. Now I thought this was better than trying to put the information here because it's already quite crowded. Um, and I actually just thought that was like a neat little um, system for kind of getting the ability to easily check these things from this menu. You can even have a look at a few of them at a time if you want, like this. Um, anyway, so Nigel has got some of these now nigel is not a very well you know what he's actually stronger than i'm giving him credit for um i think while i was playing this game he's actually gained uh, a bit of skill um he's actually not as bad as i'm thinking but i i had actually disallowed him to use the supplement and disallowed him to do the um the high skill tasks which is sort of weird because now i'm looking at this and actually the other person in this zone is quinn and Quinn has very good empathy and precision, which gives a final value of 54. Whereas Nigel, um, he's actually decent. He's not quite as good in terms of his talent. But actually, he still ends up with a higher. So let's switch that round. I think this is wrong. Okay, Nigel can do everything. Let's open up Quinn. And Quinn can't do supplements or the high skill tasks, right? Oh, I should just say, I've changed the icon for the skill level of, for so, you know, certain tasks, certain animals, certain pieces of equipment require a high skill level to to fix which basically means they just take a lot longer to fix or feed or whatever 
I've changed the icon so it's these little chevrons. I did this because it's easier to, to see these at a glance, whereas before it was like this big archery target with a couple of squares next to it, and the problem was the archery target thing didn't change, and that was the big part of it. Um, so it was, you know, you're having to squint at these tiny little blocks to see the difference. Um, so just to give you some examples, if we go to the animal tab, here's a little chevron. This means skill required. Let's see if we can find one with two chevrons. In fact, let's type in skill. Okay, so the mega double feeder, right? The massive double feeder. That has high skill required. So that's, I think, let's see. Do we have any animals? That's two chevrons. We haven't actually unlocked any two, two chevron animals yet. But anyway, when we do, this will stop. Quinn from doing them and it would leave them for Nigel because Nigel's at the moment a better feeder I think Quinn will actually overtake him um, once he gains a few feeding levels but at the moment that makes sense so if we just watch this in action um, do we actually have any I think it's the supplements here someone here takes supplements I think it's the southern stingrays so you know supplements as anybody who's played the game will know can be very time consuming um, so that can that that will speed things up by not allowing the less skilled Acris to do it and I think we have a similar thing going on here, but more with the skill levels. So we've got the striped box fish, which require skill. Um, more about this later. I've updated the, um, the tooltip on these uh, on these tasks, so they show more information. But what I really want to show you is if you can just see that little chevron on the cockles task. Um, so that's another thing I've added. Because skill levels are now sort of more, more important for the way you manage things, I've actually highlighted those for you. You can see both on the feeding tasks and on the fixing tasks we now have the chevron showing actually on the task itself um, so that can give you a hint and therefore you you know you might want to switch things around to make sure that your uh, certain staff members are you know, your better fixes for example are doing maybe ignoring all the ones that don't require skill in fact maybe let's let's do that let's have a little look at our fixing staff god there's quite a lot in this one I keep being reminded of more things that I've done because <laughs> so um, I get another suggestion that someone made was to fix the positions of these roles on the staff management tab. So I've done that now. So cleaning, regardless of what other skills the person has, is always in this top right corner and feeding is always the first. So it makes it a little bit easier to spot things. Um, I would normally spend a bit of time thinking about what I want to research next, but I fancy maybe the lump sucker. So we can easily see here's a high fix thing at five, a lot of ones and stuff here. So this this is a great example. So Romeo, although he's not got the best talents for this, I think he's almost certainly going to be our best fixer. So and Miko, Miko is very good actually. Okay, let's open up Miko and Romeo. In fact, if we right click, we can open it on the advanced tab. Although that didn't seem to work for Miko there. Huh? I was sure I tested that. How weird. Oh, that worked now. Okay, that was strange. A little it seemed to not quite work on that particular occasion, so I might have to have a little look at that. But what we can do here is we can actually what I've done is I've actually added a no skill. So this obviously this icon doesn't appear anywhere, but this basically means you know a lack of chevrons. So Romeo and Miko could maybe not do those. Um, and then everybody who's got fixing of at least one. For example, although Gabri's gonna be cleaning quite a lot. Jim's at three. Yeah, go on. Jim, you shouldn't do the high skill ones. Um, vet, you you can you can do the same. None of these people are awful. To be fair, we've actually got quite most of our fixes are actually pretty decent. To be fair, but hopefully that will make things just run a little bit more efficiently. So this is now assigned to Jim. Wait, was Jim one of the good ones that like he should be? getting confused <laughs> I swear we just set these am I mad did we just set these hmm I will re-watch that video and just see what happened there everybody else seems fine Romeo maybe I just got mixed up who I clicked there I might have clicked on someone else but um all right, yeah, Jim is certainly not going to be doing those anymore, and neither is Yvette. Okay, great. Not sure exactly what happened there. Um, 
therefore, so here we've got Miko, who's obviously our person who does the, the high skilled ones. Um, and you might have to make a call here because what I've just done, that might work out slightly more efficiently. It might not because um, it might mean that your staff are doing more walking between their jobs. So it sort of depends, you know, you're definitely going to have to um, come up with the best strategies uh, for your particular aquarium layout. You can see that I've got a pretty distributed set of pumps because I haven't actually done like a, a big pumping system. I have a little bit of shared pumping, for example, on this side, but on this side, it's all just um, equipment attached directly to tanks. So um, in this particular one, actually what I've just done might make it less efficient. Uh, whereas if you had all of your pumps in one area and your, um, sorry, not all your pumps, all your filters in one area, then actually having those um, uh, disallowed skill levels set to different staff members could actually increase efficiency. So one more thing before we move on to the next uh, bit of this vlog, I just wanted to show you the skill levels over here. So I'm just going to speed it up and we'll just see what comes up. So on the right hand side we've got what's going on with the supplements, but on the left hand side we've got more of the skill level thing going on. So for example we've got you know two sponge for, uh, pellet feeders, often one would do one followed by the other, um, but instead what we're going to do here is you'll see that Nigel, who is not a very good feeder, 14, he really will be a lot slower if he ends up doing any um, skill tasks or supplements. He's going to do the sponge pellet and then we've got Verity here who's much much better at 49. Um, who's starting off by doing some sponge pellet and then she's going to go over here and do these um, skilled tasks while Nigel mops up all of the unskilled ones. You see how quickly she can do these skilled ones. Okay, so that's the disallowed items and skills. I'm very uh, interested to hear what you guys are going to do with them. So um, if you've got any ideas, leave them in the comments. Um, hopefully this will empower you and it will just give you some additional control. At the same time, you know, you only have to use them where they're necessary because they're this, this opt-in thing. You don't have to do any setup if you just want the default behavior of them doing everything. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, I've tweaked some of the prestige formulas. Now, you won't see like a massive change in the prestige levels that um, your existing aquariums generate, so don't worry about that. But what you might find going forward is um, certain things are slightly more efficient and less efficient. Um, let, me, let, me, let me talk it through. So the first thing is actually that you now, if you hover on the prestige value of any animal, you actually have this much more detailed tooltip. So, Half of the point of this is just to make it a bit clearer to new players of the game, and maybe even existing ones who've never really, you know, um, asked because this stuff was pretty opaque before. You know, how does your prestige actually get generated? Well, this now just tells you, and hopefully it's clear. So basically, it kind of says it at the bottom and the top. Each get, time a guest views this, there's a chance that they'll enjoy it generating prestige. The prestige generated is, is literally this fixed number. This is fixed based on the animal. It does increase the larger the animal gets, but other than that, it's fixed. But then underneath, you have the prestige chance. Now, this number changes depending on how many of the animal are in the tank. Um, so this is the way the game uh, rewards you for having groups of animals, because it'd be a pretty lame aquarium if you literally had one of every animal, apart from that level that you guys know where you have to only have one animal. Hopefully, you've reached it. There's, there's a level where you're limited to one of each animal. So... And at the end, it says each time a guest encounters a particular animal or object, there is another chance for them to enjoy it. Okay, however, it'll only generate prestige the first time. So this is um, making it clear that it's okay to have the same animal in different tanks because there is a less than 100% chance that they'll enjoy it. Um, there's, there, you'll have additional chances and therefore you'll actually be able to you know, generate more prestige overall. I think it's a common misconception that you should only have one tank, one, one animal is only in one of each. Let me try that again. You should only have... Uh, one tank for each animal rather than having multiple groups of animals in multiple tanks and actually you can absolutely still increase the amount of prestige you have uh, by doing that and that's part of what these this prestige tweak that I've done is that for s s a smaller animal like this Arabian dotty bag um, if we take out all but one Prestige chance is only 37%. This is ever so slightly lower than it would have been otherwise. Um, it would have been 40% before, but I'm not going to concentrate too much on what the levels are previously. I'm just going to talk about what the levels are now. Now, that's not especially high, um, and therefore we, we, we can add a few animals to boost it up. So, you know, you add a couple, and it gets up to, like, 62%, and then we add... 
okay, at the end of the day, all my animals got dropped. That's just how it handles the feeding calculation. So 62%, we can add one more. 71, so it's gone up another 9%. Another one, 77, it's gone up 6%. Can you see we're getting diminishing returns? So at some point with the smaller animals, actually adding more animals of the same type to the same tank gives you diminishing returns. Um, and you can, you can you know, see what those numbers are by hovering over them. And they're different for every single one. There's no rules of thumb here. So, you know, you, you, you are going to, if you want to, optimize your animal placements to the nth degree then you know you can interrogate these numbers and work out how it works best but the general rule of thumb is the smaller the animal um, you want to have a certain group size definitely like adding the first few is really valuable and that makes sense tiny little animal in a big tank you're not going to guests might not see it and that'd be a shame once you get to about this level at 77 percent probably instead of add adding another arabian blue line dotty back you're better off adding a few of these to a different tank because then you get a whole other chance for them to um, for them to see it um, and if you work out the maths then um, that's that's often the case so you know maybe if you had the probably the optimal here would be to have maybe um, if you were going to add one more you'd probably want two groups of three would probably work out slightly better than one group of six although it does depend on the animal for larger animals because they end up they actually have a, a higher base prestige generation rate so for example here 42% compared to the Arabian dolly bag, whatever it had. 37%, slightly higher. And if we go to a really large animal, um, not even really large, I mean this is just a surgeon fish, uh, sorry, a unicorn surgeon fish, which is pretty big, but not the largest in the game by any stretch. We've got a 50% chance. Um, so basically, the first rule is that large animals um, just have this higher chance to generate prestige. Um, and that's because they're larger, you, you know, it makes sense because the guests will, are more likely to notice them. This is a change I wanted to do for a long time because it didn't really make sense to me that the tiniest animal had just the same chance to be seen. Um, and, you know, what I'm trying to do here is I'm make, trying to make it so that with small animals, it makes sense to have large groups and multiple large groups, as I was talking about earlier. Sometimes it's you're better off having two groups than just one. Um, but with the large animals... You know, you do, firstly, you don't need as many for them to get noticed, um, and also it's less important that you, you go for the, the large groups. You can see here that once we've got three of these, we're actually at 75%. Um, gosh, if we even just add one more, um, that diminishing returns thing isn't kicking in quite as quickly because they start off with a higher basic rate of, uh, of prestige. Oh, the tank's full. Let's just sell a few of these clownfish to show, so, show you what I mean. Oh, my sword has spotted boxfish as well. Oh, this is an, an, another thing. It does it explains when you have the neg what the negative prestige chance. So basically, because these are no longer having all of their care requirements fulfilled, we actually got a little bit of negative prestige chance there, but I've got rid of that now. Anyway, 84% chance. So to be honest, that 84%, you're doing pretty well. And yeah, if you wanted to, you could have another group of these somewhere, but you're, you know... You're, you're fine at that sort of percentage. I think once you get to the 80s and 90s, you, you, you know, you're pretty golden. So that was a lot of information. So I hope that made sense to you guys. The underlying formulas are, you know, are a little bit complicated because what I'm trying to do here is is match uh, real life expectations. You know, what what sort of displays would real guests enjoy? And you know, the point I'm trying to get to is this thing of like, basically, um, small fish. You want large shoals of them. And you probably want to see them in multiple tanks because they're smaller and you might miss them. But your large fish, your showstoppers, smaller groups are okay. And um, you don't necessarily need to have the multiple sets of them in, in your tanks. Now this might seem like it's a bit of a boost to large animals because they're basically getting this higher prestige generation chance. But at the same time I've slightly lowered the actual prestige um, point value bonus that they get for large, being for being of a higher size so um, don't worry I've done all the balancing it won't actually change the, the the amount of prestige your aquarium earns that much it basically comes out even but the now I'm trying to push you towards um, yes yeah, a slightly yeah slightly better displays basically like there was this weird thing where like in the way it used to work a whale shark had the same chance to be seen or you know to generate prestige as an azur demoiselle the first fish in the game the difference was the whale shark generated a lot more prestige and i didn't think that was right i actually think the whale shark because it's so big you know you should you could sh you should be able to have maybe just one of them maybe two of them at tops and you'll have a hundred percent chance of generating prestige and that is the case because it's so large and that just makes a lot more sense to me 
Okay, so I've talked a lot about that. The next thing I want to talk about um, is the auto feeder. I've put in quite a big change to the auto feeder, so I'm going to just um, hop into another game and we'll continue talking about that. Welcome back guys. So this is another game where I'm playing on the full unlock sandbox mode where you're still trying to generate prestige, you still have to run a profitable aquarium, however you don't have to worry about unlocking things, you start off with everything. And this is nice because I can actually show off the auto feeder which you only unlock at rank 12 um, under normal circumstances. So since quite early on with the after the release of the game, um, people sort of were a little bit, some people, not all of them, were slightly disappointed with the auto feeder because it didn't sort of give them that massive increase in productivity that they were hoping for, um, even though it's quite a late game thing to unlock. So um, I have given it a lot of thought over the months into a way of changing it without making it unbalanced, and this is what I've come up with. So the auto feeder, Uh, here's the description. Once you've chosen the food type for it to dispense, the autofeeder will release the correct amount of food into the connected tank at the beginning of each day. Unfortunately, the autofeeder cannot dispense supplements or food for animals which require skill. These must be fed by hand. So, the autofeeder used to have to be uh, refilled by your staff. It, it basically created a feeding task, um, but the advantage was that you could feed it, you know, basically pour a box into it, in a, uh, and it wasn't a very skilled task, so anybody could do this, and then the autofeeder would then feed your fish over time. So this was quite good for say that one fish that you've got in a tank it may, means that you wouldn't have to have a staff walking all the way over there um, it would just be able to spread 50 food over five days or whatever and feed that that fish every day in act, in actuality what people found when playing the game was they ended up having larger and larger tanks larger and larger amounts of food and actually what they really wanted the auto feed to, uh, to be was a way of feeding a lot of food at once not a way of feeding a, a single fish over many days so while the auto feeder did have some utility it wasn't really what people wanted it to be. So the change is that the auto feeder now refills automatically at the beginning of each day. And I can hear people already whooping <laughs> as they hear this. Uh, because it, it does mean that if you, you will be able to make even larger aquariums and it really will take quite a lot of the heat off your feeding stuff. There are some caveats to this. The first is that the auto feeder uh, can break down and uh, your fixing staff will obviously have to deal with that. It's a very skillful job when the auto feeder breaks down. Um, for a minute I thought it, one had broken down but it's actually um, this uh, this filter here that's broken down. Here we go, this auto feeder is just broken down. Um, so it's a skillful job, it will take quite a long time for even a skilled staff member to, feed, uh, to fix it, uh, maybe an hour and a half it will take, sorry, hour and a half of game time. Um, a non-skilled fixer will take, like one that you can hire at the beginning of the game, will take, um, you know, an entire day to fix it. So they'd be better off actually just doing the feeding themselves. Now the other problem with the auto feeder is that they can't feed supplements or skilled fish. So with this new change where I've, I'm highlighting the skill level of tasks more better, I actually felt more like finally this was a mechanic that I could implement because I was worried that you can see how long this is taking to fix um, and that's I think that's Jim who's got like a skill of three yeah so you know they're pretty skillful and it's taken them well, I say they're pretty skillful they're medium skillful level they're not like the bottom they're also not the top uh, it definitely took them an hour um, so what I was saying was that now that there is a clear differentiation between skilled tasks and non-skilled tasks. I feel like I can now experiment with mechanics that change depending on the skill level. Whereas before I just felt like it would be too confusing if, for example, your auto feeder just couldn't feed a certain task and you'd be like, oh, well, why is this not working? Well, now it's quite clearly highlighted because there's a little chevron on the task. So let's, let's build a tank. This is my just little money making zone. Um, I will keep these things and I will move them around the corner. I hope I have enough money. I don't want to expand too much because I don't want to <laughs> run out of money. But what I'm going to do is, gen is make a little... Um... Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to build our first Chicago tank. We're going to go for the internal variety, as in it's an internal corner. That. Very nice. 
and another little fix while I'm talking you through it. Um, I've made the platform tool a bit smarter. Um, so by def it will always by default um, try to match the height of an adjacent kind of access platform, access point. So um, so here it's going to jump up to that level. Um, however, if you are not at a access point, it will jump to the nearest platform or stairs instead. So you can see um, before it would actually jump to here, which would be annoying. So now it jumps to here um, and your stairs are now pretty good at auto um, matching as well. And so it's a bit easier to do fun things like like that. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's basically just a bit smarter now. So we want to do this quest. Let's do this French angel fish thing. Okay, so we'll put three of these in as a bare minimum. But let's see what else we can do with sponge pellet. We got these Arabian butterfly fish, this mayors, and these are gonna. This is gonna work great, right? Because these have skill required. So let's add three of those and three of those. And actually, let's add a few more of these. Um, We'll add five French angel fish in total because when they've grown up they will take a total of 50 which is the exact amount that an auto feeder feeds so that'll work out quite nicely so let's use some of the new plants from last time um, yeah this will be good that will give us a lot of plants let's use a shell we that will give us a lot of rocks and then um, a little bit of asparagus weed okay and then Um, uh, how much do we need? I think we need two of these. And then let's connect another pump. I could have put my stuff around this corner here, but I thought I'd try and keep it um, relatively close to where my other guys are going to be going. Okay, can't actually afford the really big one. Let's try this one. I think that's fine. And we don't actually have any sponge pellets so let's get some of that now obviously I can put some more stuff in here but I'm just going to start it off with you know with small and um, so now I want to talk to you I've been waiting to talk to you uh, about this this thing because I didn't want to kind of uh, pre-spoil it but anyway um, you've probably already seen this but we now have this advanced um, task tooltip so when you hover over a feeding task uh, firstly it tells you of the task required skill next it tells you whether it's uh, assigned to anybody it already did that but it's also now got a breakdown of the things that need feeding and these will actually update so when one of those sets one of those sets of animals has been fed um, it will go green um, and then finally you have the ability to set a task to be important or unimportant now this is basically per task prioritizing which i know people were it's another thing that people have asked for so i'll show you that in a moment but first what we're going to do is we're going to get an auto feeder now it can't Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh gosh, I'm going to have to wait for a little bit for some money. Well, luckily people can feed here. I might need to change some zones. Um, you don't have a zone assigned. Um, actually, that is in this zone, strictly speaking. I guess I'll just make it a bit bigger to make sure. In fact, let's make this important. This will show you. So now, as, as soon as someone is available in this zone, uh, this is the next task they will do. They will carry on doing their previous task because it'd just be inefficient if they didn't do that. So I just, I think that's what you guys would probably prefer. Otherwise, you're going to have to be maybe waiting for someone to finish before clicking it because you don't want them to cancel their task. And then you saw that that was done relatively quickly. Now, you know, you can see there's these two muscle tasks here, um, which weren't done. You've got all these which weren't done. These are all in the same zone and they weren't done first. So... Um, what it basically does is it overrules the distance thing. So normally what it would do is distance will trump and, and, um, some other things. And therefore, what this does say, it doesn't matter how far away you are, if you're available and you're assigned to this zone, I want you to do this task. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, have we got enough money? We do. So what you can do is buy an auto feeder. Um, and this does need to be accessible like it was before, but it doesn't have to be accessible to be refilled with food. It just needs to be accessible to fix. And then we're going to, the very first fill will happen instantaneously. So you can change it to krill. No, not krill, sponge pellet. Uh, and that will automatically, well, it would have automatically fed the animals in there. But of course they were already fed. So let's wait till the, the next day. So 
also now if we hover over this you can see that the French angelfish have already been fed because they don't require skill but the two skilled ones haven't um, so you know in this current circumstance it doesn't seem like the best usage because they're still gonna have to make the trip to do this anyway um, so you know either if you had more butterfly fish um, then it'd be worth them making the trip on their own because otherwise you don't want to have to maybe do two trips to sponge pellet or perhaps you know a better justification would just be say you had a load of things that ate um can this go in oh that's krill i actually meant to do a plant one green pellet but never mind so for example you have a load of things that eat um krill then oh i've run out of money <laughs> sell a few of these If we set this to Krill, then those guys have automatically got fed and no one's ever even having to make a trip. So I chose the other one because I wanted to show you guys the um, effect of um, the skill versus no skill. So that's the reason I did that. That wasn't necessarily the best usage of the, of the auto feeder. Really what you want to do is, is, is avoid your staff having to make the trip at all. And obviously, you know, it just needs to be fixed when it breaks down. Um, let's just add a few kelp to get rid of that warning. And then the other thing you will have noticed is that these autofidges change colour when you choose the food type. So at a glance, if you do know your food uh, types relatively well, um, you can you can say, well, that's sand eel, that's sponge pellet, that's krill. Um, you can obviously click on them to see what, what is assigned. And earlier I said that the first time you assign something, it will automatically fill up. This is to stop you using one autofeeder um, for everything. Like what we could do is this is already fed and then we could switch it to green pellet hope that it refills and automatically fill, feeds this task which wouldn't be fair so um, basically if you add the auto feeder in the middle of a day and then set a food it will automatically fill up that first time so you can you can use it instantly you don't have to wait till the beginning of the next day for it to work which is quite convenient but uh, you can't like cheat the system by selling uh, by by keep changing that refill amount um, and if you do try and sell it uh, it will be worth less, so you also can't cheat the system by kind of buying and selling auto feeders over and over again. Not that you'd want to. All right, so yeah, um, along with the the task prioritization thing, um, that is all of the features in today's episode. Um, there's, okay, there's one other thing, right? Which is there's you can now search by the word equipment. So if you only want to have equipment which has nitrate reacting, you can do this. If you get rid of that equipment, then you'll also show, for example, the plants that give you the nitrate reacting power. That was just another request that someone made. So that is it. I basically, this this update was all about going through quite a big backlog of sort of these sorts of convenience features, these features which sort of, um, yeah, just kind of improve the playability of the game, give you more control as a player. Um, and next, uh, I will be moving on to... Uh, Steam Workshop support. So more information about that in due course, but um, yeah, please do keep an eye out for that. Uh, we are probably want some, um, there'll probably be the ability to beta test that. So keep an eye on the Make Aquarium forums on Steam if you want to uh, be involved in that uh, process. And um, yeah, I will keep you updated about when to expect that. So thank you for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoy the update and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.